Hi Girl Scouts, this is Angela and I'm here today to inspire you to get outside and look for those tiny little creatures that are in your yard or your garden or the park. You know, insects, bugs, even the spiders who crawl around out in nature and are really one of the keys to how nature functions. So today we're gonna actually make an art project inspired by insects or bugs or spiders even. We are gonna make paper mache. Paper mache is simply when you make something three dimensional by layering strips of paper and gluing them together with flour and water or some kind of glue. It is a pretty messy process. So there's quite a few supplies that need to be had in order to make your insect sculpture. I recommend a table covering, something to protect the surface that you're working on. It will make cleanup so much better. Wet paper towels and baby wipes are both great options for keeping your fingers clean and any spills getting cleaned up. Flour and water, white school glue and water, or Maj Podge are great options for your glue substance to put the old newspapers or old paper to be recycled that you need together to make your sculpture. Maj Podge and acrylic varnish. They are great for sealing your sculpture after it's been painted and protecting the paper below the paint. Something to mix your flour and water, your white school glue and water so that you have it to use. I also recommend having a paintbrush that you don't get care gets glue on it. Masking tape will help you create your innards of your newspaper based or old recycled paper based sculpture. Q-tips and cotton balls can help create texture and create the legs of or antenna of your insect. Four disposable cups will help you create a support structure for your insect as you're building it or it needs to dry. They will also help you by giving you something to mix your flour and water in and such. So very helpful and useful tools acrylic paint to paint your insect, paint tray or paper plate for your paint, dry paper towels to help clean up any messes or to clean your brush after you've switched colors, paint brushes that you want to paint with, and of course, a camera or a bug book from the library, or even you can check Google and look up some information on Wi-Fi. Just make sure you ask a parent permission first. So those are our supplies. The most important ingredient in making your Maj Podge is the glue. Well, besides the paper. So we're gonna make flour and water glue for your Maj Podge. Basically, you see I poured flour in a cup, then some water, and now, I'm going to take my mixing utensil, whatever one you have works, and basically mix it, mix it, mix it, and break up the clumps of flour. They are really important to remove, though, so you have a nice mixed up glue. Clean up any spills, and then keep mixing some more until everything is nice and smooth. You want it thin enough that it will soak into the paper. The other kind of glue you can make is a mix of school glue and water. Basically, you're gonna squeeze school glue into a cup, add water, and basically play with the balance until you get it to a nice consistency where it absorbs in the paper and it sticks together. You may have to play a little to get it right. Now you know how to make two types of glue and it's time to figure out what kind of bug we want to make out of paper mache. I'm going to throw a little inspiration your way, maybe get you to go outside and look for some of those bugs. Hey, and maybe even take a camera with you. You never know what kind of cool picture you can get of a bug hanging out in a flower 
Or maybe you'll notice something in a picture that you never noticed that was happening right in front of you. <laughs> so, really, turn on those observation glasses, get a little inspiration for the next few minutes, then go outside, take your phone, a magnifying glass, something, just draw two eyeballs and see what you can find out there in the yard, in the garden, in the park, wherever you can go explore. And then come back, gather your materials, and we will get started on making some paper mache insects, bugs, or <laughs> See you in a few. I decided to make an ant. So I went to the wonderful internet and Googled slash searched the parts of an insect, particularly the ant, to figure out what I needed to do more accurately to create my ant sculpture out of paper mache. So I highly recommend you find a book with the bug anatomy in it or get permission to search on the internet. And that way it is, available to you as you create the inner body of your bug. All right, so step one, you need your paper, whatever that paper is, newspaper, uh, used paper that was meant to be recycled. Um, you're gonna make balls out of it. Is the best way I can get to explain how to create the shape of your body parts. And then you're gonna use your masking tape and tape together the different pieces. You can kind of squish the paper and adjust it as needed. And the tape can work as basically a way to reinforce the shape. I often will keep playing with it and I will actually take small bits of paper and create forms to create, say, a little more bulge to the head because it's a little more of a triangle or a pop of an eyeball and tape it down with the masking tape. As you can see, I'm doing here to get a little more of the ant traditional shaped head. I'm going to keep applying the masking tape as I apply more wads of paper to build it up and then fill in the spots that need to be filled. More masking tape. Obviously, the back end was not long enough and I needed to add more, so here I go. Tape, 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 get it all together, all three major parts of the ant's body. Now, I'm going to use actual Q-tips to create the legs of my ant. I'm actually going to tape them together to create the different segments of my ant's legs. It is an insect, so an ant has six legs. What makes it different from a spider is that a spider has eight legs. And so I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna keep adding on different segments of the legs using the tape. This part is pretty fun, actually. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do all this. So don't worry if it feels like you're being fussy. This is on high speed. So this really does take some time and it will take some tweaking on your part to mess with it um, and to get it to look just like you want it to look. And honestly, at this point, it doesn't need to look that accurate. You really are creating what we call in sculpture, the armature or the shape, the structure of your insect or spider sculpture, your bug sculpture. Because then on top of it, we're going to cover it with strips of paper and coat this whole thing with, try to make as smooth a surface as possible. 
I'm just going to keep going. Look at that. I've gotten all my six legs down. Now I'm going to add some antenna using the Q-tips as well. Yes, now my ants really got its basic shape. It's time to cover it with strips of paper using glue. So here we go. I basically am dipping it into the paper mache glue, which is really uh, my flour and water mixture. I do mix in some of that school glue that I made and kind of use them together so that I don't waste since I did demo both types of glue. I also have Mod Podge because I'm gonna seal with it, but if you had Mod Podge and that's all you wanted to use, that is okay. Um, you might wanna water it down though for the actual covering of your structure with your strips of paper. And that's basically what I'm doing is ripping strips of paper and just soaking it and gluing it down and layering and layering and layering. And you're gonna feel like you're layering forever and ever and ever. And you might layer everything and give it a nice good coat and then let it dry and come back and layer some more. That is the joy of paper mache. It is a little bit of time consuming as far as getting it exactly how you want it but what a cool reuse of paper now i just keep going at it and adding to it to create that smooth surface i flip it over and start working on the underside yep here goes oh the back end needs some more paper and i just keep adding i mean you will kind of have moments where you feel like all you're ever going to do is add paper to this, but don't worry, it will end. I promise. It really doesn't take that long. It just has moments. So now I'm going to try to cover the insides between the legs. And one of the things that you want to do is create kind of a strip underneath it for support, which I will show you, but I actually have started covering the leg and I'm using real skinny strips to wrap around it. I'm getting it really wet with the flour water mixture. And I'm just wrapping it until it breaks and then adding another piece or finishing off with the rest of the piece. And I'm going down the leg. Now, one of the things that you will notice is that that is the last time I will start at the body. It's a lot easier to wrap legs with the paper when you stop, start at the end of the leg or what would be our foot part of our leg and go up towards the body then from the body down to the tip of the leg where our foot would be so now i'm adding those structural supports around the base of the leg to help hold it in place you're going to see a bunch of strips go on another leg see look at that down from the foot to the body and i'm going to repeat that for the rest of them it's a lot easier Now, this is going to happen, what, five more times or four more times, sorry. And you're going to notice that my hands get really gluey. If you look close, there's a lot of that paper mache flour water mixture. So I stopped and I went and I washed my hands. It made it much easier to finish covering the rest of my bug's inner structure with its new external skin of paper. And I actually rotated how I applied uh, the strips of paper by going horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Now, once I'm finished, I will actually stick it on two plastic cups to let it dry. Drying will take some time. So as she sits there, it is perfect time to clean up our mess. Make a mess and clean it up and all day long you'll have good luck. So now, once the body is dry, it's time to paint. I have poured a bunch of different colors I think will create a nice dimensional look to my ant. Starting with dark colors on the bottom and getting lighter towards the top. I'm working on blending and layering. And basically I'm going to do that till I just like the way it looks. I keep referring to an image of an ant that I found on Google search engine and basically I'm going to keep at it until I like the results. Then it's time to let it dry. 
Once it's dry, you can coat it with Mod Podge or acrylic varnish. This will protect the bug from changes in moisture and protect the paper and the paint from any sort of elements that might damage it. You're gonna put on a nice thick coat. You might even wanna thin it out in spots so it dries faster. Once it's dry, you will have a cute little three-dimensional sculpture of an insect or bug or spider. Girl Scouts, thanks for joining me today and I hope you appreciated how much fun it is to make something out of paper mache and reuse, reuse, reuse. And now you'll have a 3D sculpture that you made all with your own two hands. And remember, when it's messy, you clean it up so all day long you'll have good luck. Now, I also wanna remind you, if you are looking for fun in-person programming, we do have stuff coming up at GSHOM here at Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan. Please check out our website at www.gshom.org and we hope to see you there.